Podcast. This is Jessica Webster. And this is Sam Pogue of the Fitness Break Room Podcast. Sit back, take a well-deserved break, and learn about the journey that helps shape the most successful fitness professionals in the industry today. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fitness Break Room Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Pogue, joined by my friend, Carmen Morgan, trainer out of Houston, Texas. Thanks for joining me. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a long time. I was really excited to get you on the show. Uh, Carmen came out here for the weekend for us to just hang out in in Austin. Usually Mm -hmm. she comes out to do a seminar or to work out or there's some sort of emphasis. And and this time we actually just got to play. Yeah, enjoy ourselves. It was fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Went to Zilker Park, shot some videos. Uh, She got a new camera for her setup. Uh, yeah, unexpected. <laughs> I know, completely. Started with breakfast, then went up there. It's like, oh, let's stop by the camera store. And, and uh, now she got her own camera. So Carmen is a trainer out of Houston that primarily is focused in the online segment, not necessarily with building online programs and writing ebooks and whatnot, but in terms of delivering online content through her app. And she was able to get an app mm-hmm. built for her because she was able to generate a large social media following, mm-hmm. which is up to... About 682K. 682, right on the money. Like, knows it. (laughs) I do. (laughs) So, you know, I think, uh, you know, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what you kind of did to help get yourself up to that following. Because a lot of people, like, we all post on Instagram, like, we talked about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like, if you didn't care about people, like, following you or, like, getting a big following, Mm -hmm. like, you wouldn't hashtag, your account would be Mm -hmm. private, like, you wouldn't even give a shit. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to tag someone or hashtag something, clearly you're trying to get it out there. And no one's upset about having a following. Never. (laughs) How did you get a following? Uh, I I approached Instagram. I had never had any social media until I started my Instagram. And because I was just reading so much in terms of, if I was wanting to leave a steady job and go into my own business, that how much social media was becoming a part of business. So I was like, okay, like it's inevitable. I have to get on social media, even if it's not my thing and I've never done it before. So I went ahead and got the Instagram and the most comfortable way for me to approach it. Cause I don't like social media too much. was for me to think of it more as like, um, how, what can I share in like the smallest amount of time that is genuinely useful that somebody could come to my page and like you know exactly why you're coming to my page. So I, I wasn't feeling comfortable doing just pictures or selfies or anything like that because I wanted to pick a smaller, uh, smaller, more specific something. And, and that happened to be for me home workouts mm-hmm. because that's where I worked out and that's what I like to do. And I knew there, there wasn't a ton of content on that. And so I was like, you know, I really want to take that and pick little quick snip workouts and tips that you can get so that you know, like, oh, okay, when I need a workout or when I want to know how to, you know, hit this area of my body, like I can go to the My Trainer Carmen page and she's going to have a video on it. So I just made it a very specific, a very like goal oriented page. And that helped me personally develop it that way. That way I wasn't overthinking or trying to touch too many areas at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked about that really early on too. You know, even when you started getting in the, tens, twenties, hundred thousand people, Mm -hmm. you know, you were getting approached by a lot of brands to start, uh, promoting their products, Mm -hmm. but you kept it very true to your, your vision of it needs to align with my, uh, value system and it needs to be workouts and it needs to be home workouts that are accessible for large audiences. Like Mm -hmm. even if Rolex was like, Hey, we'll give you all these Rolexes. Like it just didn't line up with your vision. So that wasn't a route that you went. Exactly. And I, and I had to be, I just wanted to be careful about that because of course it is tempting to take whatever somebody wants to give you, yeah. but I was like, uh, no, you know, I'll make sure it, uh, it fits fitness for sure. And that is, it was something that I would actually genuinely use. So mm-hmm. that made it a little easier for me to say no to a lot of them is like, if it was a slim tea or like a tummy tea talks thing, it was easy for me to say no, because I would never in my life use that. Yeah. So I'm not going to pretend like I'm going to use it on my social media. Yeah. It didn't make sense. So how do you walk that line too? Like, I mean, you still, uh, you know, you're able to get paid by companies to mm-hmm. be able to um, wear their products, mm-hmm. right? And uh, what I like about your page too is like, you might wear a certain top or pants or leggings and like, hey, this is where it is. But it's not like necessarily in your face, like buy these. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. made me, it gave yeah. me a butt like this. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you can look like this. Right, right. And your page isn't like that at all. Uh, yeah. How do you walk that line? I uh, I try to, I think maybe my artistic side might help with that a little bit. Um, I try to just take nice photos or action shots and like pick workout gear that's like genuinely cute. Mm-hmm. Like I've had people send me stuff before that I've agreed to do something for, you know, over email. And then when it gets there and I try to, I try it on if it's doesn't fit me and it's really crappy material or whatever it might, I have to email them back and I send, I've sent stuff back multiple times. And so I just make sure that it's always like, if I'm not wearing those leggings, like, or if they don't look right on me or they function weird or I have to like doctor them or pin something in order to get a booked picture, then I'm not going to, like, I, I just don't share that kind of stuff. So I make sure it's like, and then I, I figure like it's not too in your face selling because I mean, everybody likes magazines and things like that. So, and I mean, I like looking at cute clothes, so I'm like, okay, if it's just cute workout outfit, like I'm fine with that. That's, that's an easier one to do. It's when it gets into the, um, the products that seem a little more selling type Mm -hmm. products that it can get hard, like lotion or, or things like that. But again, I just try to pick stuff that's I genuinely use. And if I don't use it and I've not, I've made mistakes, you know, I've, I've done like a, a lotion, I want to say, or something that was like, I, I, I used it like four times <laughs> and that was it. Like I don't use it, right. you know, but I'm not going to work for them again. And I don't, and I learned that, you know I mean? I was like, I, I need to get out of that. Like, yeah, sure. I'll take it. Even yeah. like, even if it is a great product and has great ingredients, I'm like, eh, you know, but I don't personally use it. So I can't lie to somebody and be like, Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, well, along the lines of, you know, everybody wants a social media following, mm-hmm. like no one would be upset to have a 600,000 person following. No. Do people treat you differently when they figure figure out that you do have a large following yeah for sure for sure it's uh, I get a little um yeah I think a lot of people think that then uh, like everything comes super easy or uh all the opportunities I have is only because of social media and I think you you just have to remember you know your content I think I still think content is 110 percent the most important part of a social media because you can get to a certain stage you can get your followers to a certain level of followers you know you can get up to like 200k or whatever it might be but you might stay there because there might be so many of you like people doing the exact same thing as mm-hmm. you and it's and so you're not setting yourself apart from anybody else you know what i mean like i i just so i tried to pick again something that was like you come to my page for a reason. You don't just come there and look at my page and it blends in with like nine other people's pages. Like I would rather it not be that way so Mm. that, you know, you want to keep, I will get new followers hopefully and I will keep growing and things like that. So that's how we became friends. Our pages are virtually the same thing. Basically. I mean, I I think I pull off some of the leggings a little bit better, uh, but I don't know. That's, that's, you you all can decide that if you want (laughs) a close up picture. You wouldn't even be able to tell. Zoom in just in the right in, spot. Right? Oh. Peach emoji coming at you. <laughs> so for you, you mentioned earlier about being able to have the creativity and, and focusing on um, the look and the mm-hmm. feel. Uh, and you said, you know, your artistic feel. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, something that you have a background in is mm-hmm. art, right? What, yeah. what was that? I was a, an art teacher for five five years before I ever went into fitness full time. So it was like a complete woo completely different field for me. I've always really enjoyed fitness. I've always been really athletic and like I have an older brother and it was always just me and him. And so it was, you know, I was always doing whatever he was doing, throwing the football, playing outside. Like I was super into sports and all that, but I just never, for some reason, I never connected it to a career. Mm -hmm. I I went to college, you know, I got my art education degree. I thought I was going to be a teacher forever. And, um, it thankfully I'm not a teacher anymore because <laughs> it was great, you know, but it was, um, it was tough. It was really tough. It was, uh, and I got to the point where I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I, so I wasn't giving my all to the students. And then mm-hmm. that's like, I, you have to get out. Like yeah. you just have to get out of it. But it's, it's helped me in terms of, um, making things, uh, breaking things down, yeah. even in fitness, you know, and teaching my clients and doing things that way. Like, because I've, I've had a room full of 40 sixth graders, mm-hmm. you know, and we're all trying to accomplish the same thing and to get them to, to produce something that that's, you know, uh, successful um, is, is it can be translated when I'm working with clients and I'm trying to get them to produce an action or a goal or whatever it might be. So I, I'm glad that I had teaching experience. I think it can help in a lot of areas. Yeah. On the way to breakfast, we were talking about 
uh, how like being a good teacher is the ability to teach you know 60 people so they all understand the same lesson the same way mm -hmm. and fitness like art is something like people like oh, I don't I could never do that right yeah I cannot be an artist I can't draw like Picasso mm -hmm. and uh, or I don't I can't work out like that because I was not like an athletic person or mm -hmm. I don't have those skills yet at the same time like you don't have to be the world's strongest power lifter the best soccer player to be into fitness mm -hmm. like you don't have to be the best painter in the world to enjoy drawing or For sure. creativity or some sort of outlet uh -huh. what was your so a lot of our audience is I just quit my job. I want to, you know, I just want to stop being a teacher, an accountant, and I want to be a trainer mm -hmm. or I just finished school and I want to be a trainer or, you know, I just went through this transformation story. Mm -hmm. um, what was your aha moment when you were a teacher that was like, I, I got to change it up. I need to do something else with my time because this isn't doing it for me anymore. I'd say it was probably when I noticed myself spending more time uh, at the gym or in my garage gym than I was doing the activities I used to do for my job. So I used to be very, you know, I mean, grading papers or whatever it might be, um, bringing things home, lesson planning, doing all that. When I started to prioritize uh, working out over that is when I was, you know, I just knew that I had to stop what I was doing and, and go ahead and pursue like something in fitness because I enjoy it so much. I, I was training a couple of friends just for fun. And so, and I was getting a taste of that and imagining what it would be like to, if that was my job, mm -hmm. like instead of teaching. And so it just like to have that enjoyment and to think, you know, like, yeah, it's going to be scary. Cause I didn't, I would, I was going from a steady paycheck to just complete like, whoops, yeah. no idea. Yeah. Like, no idea. <laughs> like just, which, you know, that's, that's of course always tough and, a, and it's easier depending on your situation, you know, and, and your support group. And, um, I was really good, honestly, just saving up money. That's mm -hmm. what allowed me to be able to stop and like take a breath and have time to switch to something like completely different. Yeah, I think that's uh, you know in, inevitably a super scary thing. And, and if anybody's read my ebook, you'll know that I typically recommend don't like don't go cold turkey necessarily, like because mm -hmm. you may not like it, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. that's a scary thing. However, um, you know, jumping full feet in, like or both feet in, allows you to actually give yourself to something and give it a chance. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if you're only putting one foot in the water, it's really hard to know if you're actually going to like it. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, for you, you didn't start at like a 24 hour fitness like I did. You didn't, you know, have an on it type facility. Mm -hmm. You didn't have, uh, you know, coworkers. Yeah. You started training out of your garage, mm -hmm. right? Which is inevitably really hard because you're only reliant on the people that you know, Mm -hmm. or your self-marketing mm -hmm. and usually that's a really hard journey and I tell people if you're going to be reliant on just your friends and family to train with you this is going to be a real tough journey oh yeah and it's you know because your friends and family typically aren't the ones who train with you no <laughs> and no. it's like your brother's sister's cousin's wife that's mm -hmm. training with you mm -hmm. right and that they're, they're the ones paying sessions um, and so then you had to build that up, but then, you know, you train in person a little bit, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then you mostly really got into the online segment. Yes. I think once my Instagram started growing, I, um, that allowed me a lot of freedom from the anxiety of like trying to get in, per in person clients all the time. So I, w that helped a lot to ease that because I was at first very, you know, I did use my contacts from teaching for mm -hmm. so long. And so I had teachers that I knew were looking for trainers. They wanted to work out I had worked at several different schools. So I had several different networks that I could choose from, which helped me a lot. Also putting out my business cards. Honestly, the one that got me the most clients was I put out my business cards outside the elevators of the apartments I lived in. And oh, that, nice. got me, that got yeah. me like, I still have two of those girls are like, have been with me from the beginning. And it's like that, that was awesome. They just happened to be needing something, picked up a card and like, that was it. <laughs> and how less of an excuse do you have when it's like literally in your apartment complex? You're like, yes. Oh, F. Like, yes. I, I don't have like, exactly. literally it's not, I, I don't have to go anywhere. It's already at my house. Uh -huh. Literally can walk downstairs. That's why they loved it. It was the convenience. It's like, and they can just text me if they're like, Hey, I'm three minutes behind. I'm like, no big deal. Cause you just walk down to my house and we work out in my house. Right. Like it was perfect. You didn't it even was. use the apartment gym. No, it, didn't. Cause it, that, you know, it was a small gym and so it could get crowded and I don't really like that. You know, that dynamic for working out with somebody. And a lot of my girls prefer one-on-one. -on -one. That was their whole point mm -hmm. is they liked the idea of like, I don't have people watching me and they weren't into that. And so I was super, I was like, Oh yeah. And my second bedroom, 
was the gym and mm-hmm. it was all i was lucky it was all concrete flooring you know it was an industrial type apartment so it worked perfectly i could slam balls we could do whatever <laughs> like why was that funny yeah <laughs> you know so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why Spanish balls a, is funny. I was a teacher for too long. <laughs> <laughs> of course anything sexual is gonna get a re- gonna get a reaction. Which uh, I would have yeah. been your best student ever. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh then you really started uh you were training some people in person, you were mm-hmm. really focusing on the Instagram, mm-hmm. and then you went the next step and mm-hmm. you started making some online programs. Mm-hmm. Right? What was that like? Because you didn't have a coach. It's not like I, you and I knew each other back then. It was like, okay, step one, mm-hmm. step two. It was, uh, okay, let's see if this works. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It was just trying it out. And I, I think I, had, I researched a little bit, you know, and I kind of looked around and saw what the online training looked like. And a lot of it was, it, like, technically way too difficult for me in mm-hmm. terms of um, – the technology they were using or if they were doing like, you know, these ebooks or these login type uh, training programs that were all very like, I was like, I know I can't make that. Like there's yeah. no way I can make that. So I just went super basic, super easy. But again, I made sure the content was like, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like I, I liked that content. It was a great program. Like it wasn't like you open it up and it's me doing a squat and you're like, okay, great. So I do 300 squats a day. Like this is not a good program. Right. You know, uh, it was, yeah, the pictures don't look great. Like they looked kind of fuzzy. Now you they don't look tell. great. Yeah. But back then they were probably awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but you know, in the, in the, I made it on a PDF and it was, you know, a lot of like drag and drop. And honestly, it looks, it doesn't look great. It doesn't yeah. look great. Like if you were to open that PDF, you'd be like, but again, I, w- I was like, you know, I have to sacrifice that and look past that and, and concentrate on the content. And, and it worked for me, yeah. you know, thankfully. Like I had women that were like, that's awesome. I get a home version. I get a gym version. You planned out all these workouts. Like I like the way we progress through difficulty or it gets a little harder and you threw in this. And I always tried to make sure, like I've always been about adding as much content as I possibly can. I always really worry about the price to content ratio. And so I priced them at ten dollars a program which you know a lot of people that i spoke to were like that's way too low <laughs> like <laughs> you're nuts don't do that and i was like uh ah, well you know so but it, it worked for me i felt comfortable with that because again i felt like the product didn't look pretty enough and like you know professional enough for me to charge more than ten dollars granted the content i agree was like you know it was a lot for your money and it was a good value but you know, I had no problem like doing that way. I didn't need to be like, I, I feel like you can set, you know, money aside right there at the beginning while I was still trying to figure it out and make sure I got that audience that I wanted. And I think it, it worked for me because I got a lot of good responses. Um, I think I processed maybe like two returns the whole time I was wow. doing it. Like, and it was, you know, and it, it, they always were like, oh my God, when I got somebody that wanted a re- refund, I was right. like, ah. It's <laughs> hard to not take stuff oh, personally. Oh, yeah. When it's you just, put yourself out there. Yes, super hard. But it um, it worked out, and I did the whole thing really janky at first. Like, I had people paying me $10 on PayPal, and then I'd send them the program. Like, it was super, super basic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but like it, pumpkin spice latte and blue yeah. lemon and Uggs basic. <laughs> that basic. That basic. <laughs> like, super basic. <laughs> But then, you know, for you, it's, uh, it, it worked, Mm -hmm. right? Because Mm -hmm. once again, you were consistent with your message Mm -hmm. and who is your audience? Like who's following you? I would say the majority of my audience. So I do have a majority female and I have, since I've started growing, uh, I've always stayed at like the above 80% female audience, which I like to have personally. Not that there's anything wrong with any other audience, but I just, it works for me. I like it. Um, there are a lot of stay at home women or women that don't necessarily want to go to the gym. I do get a, well, um, a, a lot of different women that are, are working out in a gym, don't know what to do. The gym's kind of intimidating. They, a lot of my workouts you couldn't do at the gym because they involve dumbbells or you can do them at home. So it's very like, but I tend to get a lot more, um, uh, asking for like beginner fitness and, and things like that, because I think that's super important. And a lot of people don't touch on that. And it's really cool to see, you know, a video of somebody deadlifting like 200 and something pounds, but it's, you know, it's not very useful to a lot of the population, unfortunately, yeah. you know, and they need to see like, you know, and I always wanted to approach the fitness like that, 
you know, I worried about like the coolness factor and I'm like at first. And then I was like, you know, like, I don't care if somebody thinks whatever exercise I'm doing is dumb. Like I really don't care. Yeah. And, and somebody else is going to have more knowledge than me and more experience than me. But it, my exercise isn't dumb because at least I'm moving. I'm not doing anything that's going to cause me injury. And a lot of the population can do it from their home and, you know, and safely, and they don't have to hire a trainer. They don't have to worry about, you know, really strict f- form things, you know, and, and injuring themselves. So I, I wanted to make sure I approached fitness with like a very open mind, mm-hmm. like very, that there's no wrong way. Well, there's way more, way more humans that would attach uh, a value to doing something like that for working out or their fitness mm-hmm. than like you and I that would like, and, and not even you as much, but like going to like some random gym and doing a random workout mm-hmm. and like putting themselves out there mm-hmm. and like, because I have no problem like look, making myself look stupid in front of a room. Like I actually really enjoy it, <laughs> right? Where, where it's like some of these, a lot of people are not very comfortable with that, and mm-hmm. they think all of eyes are on them. I'm like, guys, you're in a 24 hour fitness. There's 20,000 people in this mm-hmm. room right now. Ain't mm-hmm. no one looking at you. No, and they like, don't care. They don't care, and that is like, oh. And so, half of them probably don't know what they're doing either. Right. So. Right. Yeah, more than half probably. <laughs> but it's you know touching someone, and and I've talked about this before that. I think walking is like the most underutilized and undervalued Mm -hmm. tool of fitness. Like if you're going to leave anything and if all you're going to do is go walking every day, like by all means, that's a hundred percent more than what you were doing. Mm -hmm. But for your audience, what I love is that it's digestible. It's easy. Mm -hmm. And is there harder things that they could venture down? Sure. But like, you're not trying to own that. You're just trying to give them inspiration to get started Mm -hmm. or do what they can. Mm -hmm. And if they go further, then that's great. Mm -hmm. Or they do different things. That's great. But at the end of the day, like getting them to do something was the true win. Yes, like, absolutely. That was my favorite part was just coming up with like, you know, I would look at, I would read Pilates stuff and like, and work with that and be like, oh, what if I like combine that move with this and see what it looks like and just kind of play around with it. And then people would be like, oh, that was super fun. It was kind of tough, but it was, you know, fun and challenging enough and that. I was like, that's totally cool. You know, and at first I would sometimes get a comment from like another trainer or something that's like, that's dumb, serves no purpose or something, you know, and I'm like, I just don't care. Like, I'm sorry. You have zero videos <laughs> on yours and you have a bunch of pictures of your cat yeah. and actually like, and you have no followers. Like, yeah. like in order to be a leader, like you have to lead. Like in order to get followers, like you have to put out stuff that people want to see. Yes. And I, and I didn't like that, like super close minded at first when I was getting into fitness, I thought a lot of people were very close minded about like, this is the only way to do it. And like, this is a testable way. And like, um, you know, we take a certification on this and this is another one. And I'm like, you know, like there's so many other jobs and areas of life that we accept creativity on. So why wouldn't you mm-hmm. like, because nobody's going to love the same thing in fitness. So right. yeah, it's right. not one size fits all. We're arguing over stupid shit. Yeah. Like, we're the, arguing like, Oh, their knees bent three degrees. So it's more yeah. of a squat than a hinge. Yes. And you're like, are they working their legs? Yeah. Who fucking like, cares? Yeah. Are they in pain? No. Then I don't give a shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're working. Yeah. They're feeling like their butt's going to look better a little bit yes. later. And yes. they got to sweat in. Mm-hmm. And if you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole, then go see some of those people. Mm-hmm. And here's some of the people I follow for my personal yes. content. Yeah. But like for you, it's like, you know what? You're moving. Yeah. And exactly. you're getting some work done. Yeah. And be happy. That's what I always say when people are like, is it okay if I do... Um, you know, like a walk around the neighborhood or I jogged around the neighborhood. I'm like, Hey, you did it. Like, that's fantastic. Any cardio that you enjoy, like, man, totally do it. There's no wrong, you know, and they would ask me, you know, or should I instead do a row machine or sprints? And I'm like, no, like do whatever you're actually going to do first and then do whatever you actually enjoy because you're more likely to do it anyway. So I actually set my own goals up to my only goal every day is to wake up. So inevitably, I'm always going to succeed. Man, you're crushing it. I know. (laughs) Every day. 31 years of success. I'm only going to fail once. (laughs) So, I don't know. If you're ever feeling down and bad about yourself, like, all right, my only goal tomorrow is to wake up. Wake up. (laughs) That's a good one. It doesn't even need to be like sit up. It could just be wake up. (laughs) Like, oh, yeah. I totally won. Check. Crushing the day. (laughs) So for you, when you started uh, putting out these online programs, how many followers did you have? Like... Uh, I want to say I got to 10 K pretty quickly. Um, and again, I just, I only think I credit that to the fact that it was a specific content on my page that you could come find something useful. Um, and I got reposted by like a, one of the larger workout workout ones, which is why I use hashtags. Mm-hmm. You know, I would hashtag something and they would then see my video and repost it on theirs and they'd have like 200 K, you know, which at the t- time, you know, or a hundred K I was like, mind blown, right. you know, and then you get reposted and then 
people come, yeah, and they want to follow my account. And that's why I wanted to make sure that when I did get reposted, that what I got reposted for when you came back to my account, you could count on seeing more of that content that you liked rather than coming back and me only having pictures or something or selfies. And then you're like, uh, like, damn, she only shares the workout video like once every whenever, you know, so I wanted to keep it like very aligned with why I was getting reposted. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we talked about yesterday, you know, now that you're up in the 600,000s, you found Mm -hmm. that people aren't reposting you as much because I think they're waiting for you to repost them, which I know you get asked all the time, like, Uh you know, shout out for shout out Uh or whatever. And it's, Mm -hmm. and to your credit, like you keep it pretty, you keep it pretty shrill. Like Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's just you, Mm -hmm. right? It's just your stuff and and what you're working through. So I've never done a shout out and I don't doubt that they work like I, the cross shout out, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like they have a similar amount of followers and I have a similar amount of followers and we pick a video from his page and put it on mine and then th- they do that or whatever. I've just never, I just don't like it for mm-hmm. some reason. I just don't like the way it looks. I'm not, I don't think I'm better than anybody like that is definitely not it. And I think sometimes maybe it comes off that way when somebody DMs me and it's like, Hey, let's do shout outs. And I'm just like, I just don't like them though. Yeah. I just don't like the way they look. I don't really I don't really want them on my page, so that's that's it. Like that, I don't do it for any other reason than just I'm like, eh, you know. And there's no, there's always like new stuff that comes. That's like, you know, there's these new groups that form that that um like kind of build on each other. And if you mm. comment enough times on each other's, then the like, you somehow like. I don't know. There's like, you know, there's all these articles on it and I forget what they call them, like Instagram growth groups or something. Oh, I'm it's, going like the Illuminaries. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like end of the world's coming kind of shit. Like what are we talking about? What kind of groups? No. No. It's like you pick a group of, of similar level followers and they all uh, comment on each other. And, and, and so you generate and then it's more likely for their followers. If I'm always commenting on their page to click on me and go follow me as well. There's like some, who knows, there's data behind it. But again, I'm, I think to myself, like, uh, you know, I just don't, I don't know if mm-hmm. I want to, like, do I, I, I understand that business and all this takes effort and all that, but I've just, I'm not sure I want it to put that much into Instagram. Like, I just don't know, yeah. you know, I'm like, uh, I'd rather do like continued education on it and like yeah. do things like that than be constantly like me me on my phone all the time yeah. trying to be like, oh, I got to make nine comments. Cause if I make nine comments, I could get two followers there and three followers there. And I'm like, you know, I just don't, I don't know, man. Like, What's up, everybody? Jessica here. Okay, this seems like a somewhat natural break in the show to let you in on a few things. First off, we also have a video version of every episode. So if you're not in your car or you are whatever and you like to live dangerously, you can go to fitnessbreakroom.com to see Sam and I and our lovely guests recording in LA, San Diego, New York, Austin, you know, all the places we visit to bring you access to the break room. Secondly, we need to go in for an ask. I know it's early, but this is so important to the success of the break room. Uh, This might be more info than you want to know, but hey, maybe you're starting a podcast and want to know this. We need to hit at least 30 good reviews in our first week or so after we've launched, so it would be a huge gift to us if you could take 30 seconds to subscribe to the Fitness Break Room on iTunes and leave us a review. If that happens, there's a good chance we'll be showcased in the new and noteworthy section, and that's exactly what we need to ensure the podcast is off to a strong start. The stronger the start, the more time we can dedicate to bringing you these unique stories of fitness professionals that are just rocking this industry. If you could do that, that would be amazing. To make this ask a little bit more juicy, if you send me a screenshot of your review, I'll give you an extra entry into our monthly fitness industry night giveaway, where Sam and I pick one subscriber to win hundreds of dollars worth of fitness swag every last Friday of the month. This month, it's December, 2017, is a huge assortment of Onnit supplements and golden earbuds, fancy. So you can find all that information on our homepage. And thanks to Onnit, as always, you guys rock. Love you. If you haven't entered to win this giveaway, you can go to our website, fitnessbreakroom.com to do that. And then you can email me your screenshot of your review on iTunes at jessica at fitnessbreakroom.com or you can hit me up on Instagram at Jessica Webster underscore and I'll give you that extra entry to win that awesome giveaway from our friends at Onnit. All right, that's it for me. Enjoy the rest of the show and thanks so much in advance for your review. It means a lot to us. It really does. It is really impressive too because Carmen is really good about uh, 
engaging and responding to all the comments or most of the comments mm-hmm. unless they're like a shitty comment uh <laughs> on her threads which is really tough considering that you have six hundred thousand followers mm-hmm. plus the dms that you probably get uh-huh. right and that's like really hard to do but even then like we hang out and and it's not like she's on her phone all day like just sorry mm-hmm. what right mm-hmm. and it's not like that at all i don't feel that way at all Good. and we just get to hang out yeah and, and which is a ton of fun um so you know that's it but that takes like time you gotta like you gotta treat it like a job Mm -hmm. right and i think that's Mm -hmm. the difference too is like instagram is a job for you Mm -hmm. it's not it's not like you're digesting your um you know whatever yeah just scrolling yeah Yeah. and and see and i like like answering comments to me rather than doing something like those those um shout outs or those commenting on large accounts so that i get seen that side of it i don't like but answering like people that have questions I like that doesn't that makes sense to me Mm -hmm. that makes absolute sense to me because I'm they're asking good questions like they want to know you know and it could be even be something I forgot to mention and then I like a lot of times people ask me something and I'm like oh my god forgot to put that in the little tip like yeah like that's an excellent tip like thanks for asking me that question because now you know and because like you know, they, it, it's people, man, and they have genuine questions, and it's like, I'm not going to ignore you or anything, and then, so instead of going on to Instagram and, like, mindlessly s- scrolling, which I feel like mentally it probably isn't good for 90% of the population anyways right. with the shit that's on Instagram, but, you know, it's, I'm like, okay, instead I'll go on and I'll pick, you know, the last post I did, you know, and I'll go through and answer all the questions I can really quick, because in, in the long run, like, that doesn't, those five minutes, that does not take me very long, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and, I don't, and I'm not scrolling, I'm not doing something else, so why not spend the five minutes just answering some questions and talking to people, and they're all f- freaking really cool, like, I have yeah. super cool community on there and they're just like they ask nice questions they make funny jokes like i love reading you know comments mm-hmm. i've got a lot of girls that i recognize like from way back when whose screen names i all remember and i love seeing their comments and i look forward to their you yeah. know whatever they're saying and so it's fun like it's super cool i'm like i would totally have tons of friends like yeah. if you guys <laughs> live next to me <laughs> right but even for you like that was an engagement piece that you used early mm-hmm. in was mm-hmm. hey here i just did this video what do you want to see more of mm-hmm. and that really helped that hone did. in the content you were going to give because it's like give the people what they want mm-hmm. right that for sure helped me because it i understand you can like run out of video ideas you're like how many like lunge videos can i show you know but when people were asking me very specific things you know and i said hey what do you want to see or what you know what kind of workout do you need you know and i'd get very like equipment specific workouts or like i only have 10 minutes or i want something cardio based but low impact or my knees hurt so i can't fully squat but i want to work my booty and so it was like that gives me tons of ideas to work with i really like feedback from audience that's like you know what i mean because everybody has a different situation and different capabilities or different equipment around them and so i'm like that's fun like yeah. i really you know i'll even get ones that are like i'm wearing a boot because i broke my ankle and i'm like oh like that's tough like, yeah let me see yeah let me see what i can do <laughs> like, and that's like the pure like engaging engagement with your audience like mm-hmm. purely like hey this uh so-and-so asked about doing a boot wor- but boot workout <laughs> but workout with a boot uh-huh. right and uh-huh. like then you do one it's like oh man like how great do they feel like you uh-huh. literally took time out of your day to shoot something mm-hmm. but that person has just happened to be the one who asked but i'm sure other people are mm-hmm. in s- a similar situation yeah whatever maybe if you're not you know you just can't use some part of your body right now like we've all been there so i'm like okay and like this is uh, i like being able to help and address with that and it's awesome that they want to continue moving Mm because i'm like holy crap like you know you can get when the second you get injured or feel pain or have any sort of issue can be very easy to be like "Mm, like i'm just gonna sit and not do anything so the fact that they're asking me for something like because they want to move i'm like that's freaking cool like yeah yeah i'd love to help with that yeah i broke my ankle a few years ago and i gotta be honest i wasn't asking things (laughs) i could do to work out and i was a trainer but it was to see how many pizzas and burritos i could crush (laughs) so i went the other direction on that round so you know it is what it is how do you walk the line of trying to be taken seriously as a fitness professional as a professional in general Mm -hmm. not even fitness and like being a female in this industry that's very male dominant Mm-hmm. And then Instagram, which is very like, check my ass out in a thong mm-hmm. with a motivational Gandhi quote, walk, <laughs> turning back and looking at it, right? So how do you, how do you walk that line? Like, you know, and still continually like get followers without falling in the trap of like just using sex to sell. Yeah. Which, I, you know, and I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I will say, I think it's totally cool if, if chicks want to go that route, but you do have to understand the limitations that come with it and that, um, 
uh, I always, I always equated the professionalism with like, it, you know, what brands would I want to team up with? You know, like if I, if, you know, like if Nike were to come to me and be like, oh, like, you know, they wanted to work with me or use me in a campaign or something. I can't, I'm not going to have an Instagram where, you know, I'm in a thong 24 seven because I don't like, that doesn't equate with me to like the huge Nikes, the Under Armors, the, you know, all those large fitness brands and anything that I've known in terms of fitness and like you know, getting up there in the industry and getting credibility. I just didn't equate it with that. And so I didn't want to, didn't want to go that route. Again, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's totally cool. I have no problem with nudity. I don't care. Like it doesn't bother me. I don't think anybody's wrong for doing it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Seen it. <laughs> Seen it. Done. Uh, so <laughs> wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Marie, get on that. Yes. You know, we need we need Nike thongs, and then we can start getting. Then it's like actual like <laughs> representation of the brand. Yes. <laughs> then a little swoosh. Marie's yeah. our friend who works at Nike, so that's just a shout out <laughs> for her. Um, um, yeah. So I just I I wanted to keep it um, again useful and and you know uh, professional to a level of like you know. And then I also honestly what helped me was like. Um, I knew my former students were going to be getting on there and being like, hey, Miss Morgan, because they were all super into social media, you know, right. when I was teaching and I never had any. And they're like, we don't believe you. You don't have an Instagram. And I'm like, I don't even know what Instagram is, man. Like, don't <laughs> don't talk to me about that and get off your phone for a jacket. But so, you know, I'm like, I, like I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just um, I wanted to make sure, you know, anybody that was looking at it didn't didn't look at it and go, meh. You know, like, yeah. uh, like kind of, you know, I just was, it was conscious of wanting to stay at a certain level to, so that I could hopefully get to, to these levels of, you know, working with larger brands and working with big companies. So I wanted to keep it con, I was conscious of that from the beginning, Yeah. like to make sure. And yeah, of course there was like crappy selfies with like bad lighting, but n nothing that I think would reflect or make a brand think twice about partnering with me or paying me for what I'm worth mm. you, you know what I mean I think that's a lot easier to do when you have consistent content that that makes sense and is uh, you know has the right market that that larger brands and things like that want to work with so yeah. mm -hmm. so how do you filter through that now you know as you've gotten bigger you get approached by more and more things mm -hmm. how do you choose what to work with and and uh you know, I know you and I can give you the answer, but you know, it's not just about the price that they're going to pay you. Like mm -mm. I couldn't pay you a million dollars to rock uh, a, a waist trainer with a tummy tea detox yeah. and a whatever. Mm -hmm. right? I, I still keep it. I still keep it to something that like I genuinely enjoy and, um, and genuinely want to do. And you know, there's going to be things that don't like, uh, recently I went to Mexico and, um, with my best friend and we took a trip and it was, uh, I, it was a comped trip. I got, you know, paid to, to post, um, about a resort in Mexico and to share Mexico. And while that might not necessarily fit with fitness and, and, you know, and nobody did have a negative response to it, which is why I think that I can justify the fact that I've kept my page. I've must have kept consistency mm -hmm. and like people know who I am and they know, you know what I'm about. And so when I did take a trip to Mexico and yeah, it was like, it, you know, people knew, like, obviously that's free and like they, you know, followers would say, but I never got any sort of comment that was like, uh, this is boring or like, Hey, right. what the hell? We don't want to see your stupid vacation. Like get over yourself. It was none of that. It was all like super, super nice, super cool people being like, Oh, cool. Enjoy yourself. Awesome. How was that margarita? You know, like and me just sharing parts of my life because I think it is important to, to share with them as well, like part of your personality and things like that. So that was fun. And I didn't, and I just felt like that reaffirmed the fact that like I've kept my page like in a good standing that nobody t looked at that and thought like, what are you trying to sell me, Carmen? Like, what's your deal here? You know what I mean? So I was, uh, now that it's gotten bigger and things like that, I, I pick things that, um, make sense, but that aren't going to, um, change anything that I, that I started the way I started my Instagram. So I'm just like, I just want to keep it all exactly the same. Like, yeah, I get some, some offers for some cool stuff, like supplements or like the tea talks and whatnot and like commission, you know, like big chat. And I'm just like, nah, because I don't, I don't take supplements. So I'm not going to mm -hmm. pretend like I do. So it's just not like, I'm just never going to, and yeah, there's, you know, people always be like, well, what if they offered you? And I'm like, eh, you know, you just, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Starting out selling out today leads down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, next thing you know, you're hawking Rolex watches mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And again, with the, with the, you know, keeping your, like, you know, your ultimate, like, what do you want to do or who do you want to work with? And thinking like, you know, if I start doing this, like, are they going to be like, uh, like, no, thanks. You know what I mean? Like, cause it does reflect a lot on who you work with and your content and what you're putting in and what you accept and don't accept is like a brands and large companies pay attention to that. Yeah. Like they do, you know, we don't care how great your butt looks in the spandex. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, and you might have 10,000 likes on a, on your selfies, like and it's in your, you know, I mean, your videos get a good amount of views, but if it doesn't, you know, if it's all a certain way, they, they still don't like that doesn't translate to a brand in any way that's helpful to them. Right. They're like, I don't care right. if a bunch of dudes are like, like, totally. So, yeah. And it's really easy to tell. And I'm sure you guys can see this too on Instagram to figure out like, Oh, you know, uh, Joe has, you know, 500,000 followers yet. He has a picture of like a shitty picture of himself, uh, mm-hmm. in the bathroom. And maybe let's say he was even shredded. He doesn't have to be shredded, but it's got like 25 likes and you're mm-hmm. like, Oh, clearly all those, likes or all the follows were bought right Mm -hmm. which is so weird that that's happening now i'm like that's i get emails all the time about our company provides likes followers and blah blah blah. i just delete 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 but like recently i had a a drop in followers and um it was because of like just robots attached to your Mm -hmm. account just because they just want to and then they do those comments where you can always tell it's a robot you know and they they comment like follow my page or something random, you know, or, or advertising something that I have no idea what it is. And I'm like, Oh God. So I just try to delete them, but I can't, I, I've never really tried to go through my followers and check for robots. So I'm just like, whatever. So yeah. I just wait for like, then you'll see like 500 drop off and it's like, Oh, right. Instagram did a sweep and got rid of those bots. Mm-hmm. Like, thank God I want them to like, you know, and you just can't focus on who cares if like your number went up and down a little it's just going to happen with the with the amount of robots out there and fake accounts that are trying to just hook on to people and like right. get followers and like whatever. Like and if just, you guys didn't know, there's also like you can pay for bots to like like photos or follow certain hashtags yeah. or like or unlike so many people and uh, it's pretty easy to tell. I feel like mm-hmm. um, I don't have the following that she does, so it's like you can see when someone like likes you over or, like follows you over and over. Clearly, they're like you know following unfollowing following unfollowing which is so weird right yeah and like but they'll never like a post or 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 anything like that yeah or it's like rad excellent whatever it is Mm -hmm. and and, you know you can use those if you're trying to engage with your audience in terms of you know that but then it also if you build an audience it's based off of that like do you have the same valuable Mm -hmm. is your audience worth the same amount so -hmm. for you how much do you pay attention to it like we just said like you don't you don't spend a ton of time on your phone like Mm -hmm. if we're hanging out at lunch like you're not just like okay gotta get this post up Mm -hmm. um you know how do how much do you pay attention to it and and do you really care i try not to honestly um pay attention too much to like the follower count and the view count and the likes because it's like you know it's all mentally very draining Mm -hmm. so you know and there was a time where i would be like a little like oh my god if like my views weren't the same like i was like oh shit like everybody hates me but and so i think it's healthier for me personally to not pay attention to those views and the likes and like my follower account because now you know in the in the analytics of instagram when you go in the back end of your account you can see like how many followers did i go up this week and i used to like look at that and i just uh, that didn't help me it did not provide any sort of i wasn't getting better at like doing better content when I saw that number go down or something like that. So for me, it was not motivating for somebody else. It might be, it might be good for them to track that number and to look at it and all that. But for me personally, I, it's better for me to not care about that. I like putting up good content. Again, I like listening to my audience. When people ask for more low impact workouts, I put up more low impact workouts. I care about that audience and like the cool people on there that like, you know, we all get along and we all can talk Mm. and, and like fun conversations. And I'm, that's what I think is going, I'm just going to keep caring about that because I, I don't find it healthy or beneficial for me to obsess over numbers right. and things like that. It's just not, yeah. Well, it shows that you're a real human that you can go in and you're responding to actual comment threads. On the back end, it can burn you in the sense that like, oh my God, you can't even respond to my message. And it's uh-huh. like, oh my God, there's like 20,000 of them. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying, yeah. right? But, um, you know, to be able to go through and do that really does show 
you know, that you put a lot of effort and care into, mm -hmm. you know, what you're putting out there, mm -hmm. which is what drives your business, right? So mm -hmm. now, you know, you went from training in person, starting out with friends and family to see if you liked it mm -hmm. after being an art teacher. Then you built some uh, workout programs online that you that are you sell and, mm -hmm. and they're built and done so people can buy them. You yep. don't have to manage it. Mm -hmm. It's they get this PDF document with a bunch of Vimeo videos mm -hmm. and a password and it's there. Mm -hmm. And now the next evolution was stepping away even more from the in-person training and we're moving into your app. Yes. Right. So Carmen was able to link up with these uh, developers uh, to be able to build a custom app. So we have the, my trainer, Carmen app, mm -hmm. uh, which is what <laughs> it's, um, it's, so it's mainly, it's all, it's weight training. It's for sure. Weight training. It's, um, five days a week, different workouts. There's no, like, there's no repeating. There's, um, tons of content. You can do it at home. I do it at home. Uh, you could do it in the gym as well. There's a lot of extras um, in terms of like areas where you can find form tips and like um, nutrition tips and uh, equipment and, and, and all kinds of things like that. And it's just like the best way that I've found. I, I was super nervous. Like I didn't respond when they first reached out to me. Um, I didn't respond for a long time mm -hmm. or I kept telling them like, let me think about this. Let me think about this because I didn't know if I was ready you know, I know an app is a lot of work. It's a lot of content and I, and I didn't want to jump in anything and I wanted to, you know, look around and not rush and see if that was the right route for me. And so I just, you know, I said, no, thanks. I looked into it. I, um, thought about the, you know, my longevity in the online community and do I want to keep making PDFs or like, you know, it would be awesome to have a team that I could turn it over to for the technology and, and making it look glorious, you know, content wise, I'm fine. But like tech and design is like, you know, all, all the way over my head so and then once I did talk with them this company is awesome like they're super down to earth they understood everything I wanted like I was very very specific and direct and I had no problem being like you know I do not want it to look like this and how is it going to function and how much content can I fit in there and like I was very which like, Carmen is this yeah I know. when do I meet her I I've never met this Carmen in the, in the couple years that oh, we've been friends I mean like I always <laughs> joke that like the guy um Colin, my, my contact, my original contact there, like, you know, we would communicate by email at first and then he was like cell phone. And then I'm like, Oh, you should have never given me your cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, Colin's great. But cause I always like, I'll just text him when something's wrong. I'm like, Hey man, like, why isn't this working right in the app? Like what is going on? And yeah. I'm like, Oh, tone it down. Carmen, like, don't, you know, he's a person and he's super nice and he's amazing <laughs> at what he does. And he's, you know, and he's so helpful. And I'm like, don't, you know, but I just get in that mindset where, because this is so much of me that and it's and it's something they pay for and yeah it's not expensive it's like so much cheaper than having a gym membership or a trainer or even you know buying multiple programs but I'm still like very very obsessed and like conscious of I do not I want people to have a really good user experience and I don't like issues and of course that's unrealistic like there's always going to be something right. in tech and with phones and, and you know in apps and that and something crashing and something not working and not everybody's going to like it and that's mm -hmm. fine. Like not everybody's going to like it. And that's totally cool. I don't mind that. But the, the response I've gotten from it is really good and it's going really great. And I really like doing it. Like yeah. I really like looking at all the workouts that I've made and like, and going through and adding in the new ones and thinking about what I'm going to add in next week. And, and, you know, and, um, uh, oh yeah, we did that. And then, okay, let's see if we add in this and trying to keep, keep the equipment like pretty basics so that somebody at home could do it and somebody at the gym could do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so how many, how many people are like on the app now? I'm over 10,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's just you, right? There's, it's not like a platform you log on to no. and chick pick and choose. No, no, it's no. It's just the My Trainer Karma It's just app. a My Trainer Karma app. It's got a pretty little picture and everything. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's, and it's all the colors I want. It's the way I want it laid out. Yeah. There's nobody else in there. You don't like log in and choose a trainer or anything because I did have somebody approach me about that version of an app and it just wasn't I was not comfortable with that because I think you know you you got to be confident in in who you are and um I, w I didn't want to align myself with with the wrong group of trainers or intimidate anybody you know yeah. make sure my audience like you know I really like my audience and I, our community is really cool and so I was like I don't I, I would like it to be something that's just ours you know mm -hmm. that's but there's I mean the other ones I'm sure they're awesome and I'm sure they benefit a lot of people it just depends on your style and yeah. how you want to approach it so you're not going to log on 
onto her app and then see my ass in a thong Mm-mm. squatting. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> which is unfortunate for all of yeah. you. I know your audience is probably really sad right now. Going, Damn it. They are. Yeah, yeah. And once they see our tandem workout, it's going to be yes. over. They're like, more of that. <laughs> probably not. She'll probably get the like, record low views. No, like, I don't know what that was, but can you just remove him? That would be great. Uh. So this has been a really cool journey for you. Like, But, mm-hmm. you know, on the surface level it's like okay cool quit you know it's like uh what's that uh movie with um the writers uh, freedom writers oh yeah with mm-hmm. uh hillary swank hillary swank right <laughs> it's, it's not like you just you know quit this like get art gig and became uh-huh. a trainer all of a sudden got reposted by a few people and now you have six hundred thousand followers like uh-huh. it wasn't this easy no. journey like you were no. by your you've been by yourself from day one mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. like until like uh you know and in, until like you not just on me but like coming into on it and like we're mm-hmm. just have keith to really talk about yeah right and then all uh-huh. of a sudden it was like just that's him yeah but yeah but, you know it's like it might seem super glorious and it is it's really a great accomplishment mm-hmm. business and fitness wise mm-hmm. and personal but it does get lonely and it's like oh yeah it's plenty of like her wall has a ton of like head marks right here from her like bashing her head like is this gonna work is this video mm-hmm. like what's been the biggest challenge for you so far in your journey um, I'd say, uh, like knowing what's right for sure is hard. Like you're saying, I think it's great to have a community of people around you that you can bounce ideas off because I've gotten, now that I'm like, you know, connected with you guys and on it and all that, it really like helped me, um, bounce ideas, check, you know what I mean? Cause you always do want a, to check something that you're thinking or feeling about and not knowing if you're doing it right. Like that's really helped me, but also staying like, just thinking to myself like, oh, you know, like I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And I've wanted to do Instagram the way I want to do it from the very beginning. And I have not changed it. And I'm confident in that. And I'm not going to change it, you know, regardless of like certain market research or whatever it might be and staying like confident enough in myself that I could do that. Mm -hmm. Um, The work has been challenging for sure. Like the hours, like I do, I work a lot, you know, I have to, I do everything myself. I don't have like a professional photographer that comes and is like, Hey, let me take a picture. It's like me setting up my cell phone timer, getting a photo. That one looks like crap. Let me do it 300 more times. before. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it's, it's all me. Like just, you know, so I'm like that, that part of it was hard, you know, it's, and it's been hard in terms of like the app content, like, um, you know, they do an excellent job. They write all, they code and whatever Mm -hmm. other techie stuff they do. I'm not sure, but you know, I, I take the photos, I edit the photo, you know, crop it down to a certain size, um, work on the videos. And so a lot of that has been challenging for me in terms of, um, I don't have an office that I go to, you know, it's just my living room. And so making sure that I don't get distracted, that I'm not, you know, getting up from my desk or doing anything and trying to set time, um, that like is, I do video editing here and I need to do it and get it done and like setting goals and not turning on the TV and don't get distracted. Mm -hmm. But then also don't work till midnight every night because that's not sustainable. And I was doing that for a while where it was just like, wake up, emails, stuff, app, 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 go till midnight. And then it's like, you know, that's, you're going to get so burned out from that. And it's not realistic and it's probably not very, um, you know, it, it, it's not producing the best quality work yeah. either. So right. you, you inevitably start giving less and less, mm-hmm. right? The entrepreneur life, which includes being a trainer, mm-hmm. it's like you, you know, you work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week, uh-huh. right? As a self-employed yeah. person, you're like, yeah. I don't want to work 40 hours a week for the man, <laughs> yeah. but God, I work a whole lot. I know. I took a nap on Tuesday at 2 a.m. or 2 p.m., uh-huh. right? So uh, it's, you know, I, I really love the the journey that you've been able to take on. And then a lot of our audience is, they want this, uh-huh. right? And, and I'm glad that you're here to be able to share. Like, it, it's not all easy, no. right? And you might have been an art uh, educated individual, mm-hmm. right? but it wasn't in print, di- digital design, no, photography, it, no, video design. No, it was classic like painting. It's and painting and like middle school and high school art. So yeah. it's yeah, it's just not graphic design at all. Yeah, it's very like you want to make some art out of a hanger and like some sheets. I'm your girl. <laughs> <laughs> like we're good with that. But no, like I wish, I really wish, you know, but hindsight, of course, but I'm like, God, why didn't I take graphic design right, or something right. web developing that would have helped me, you know, cause I'm not, I am not good at, at any of that. So, so when you look at her page and see, you know, there's all these beautiful pictures and recipes and workouts, it's literally her 
trial and error. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you can go back to like your first sets of videos and pictures oh. and you're like, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And like the light quality, you know, and I'm like, Carmen, like what <laughs> were you thinking? Like that's the worst. But, you know, you all got to, you have to start somewhere. And then, it, like I said, I think once you're genuine with your approach and your content is the way you want it to be, the, it, the quality isn't going to be focused on as much. Like don't yeah. get me wrong now, everybody's phone's so awesome that the video quality is amazing. So you don't even really have to worry about that too much anymore. You know, just be conscious of you know, I, I always got attached to like a blank wall. Mm-hmm. And at first, you know, people were like, that's so boring. Like, you, you know, why are you always in front of a gray wall? And I'm like, hey, like, that's my gray wall. Yeah, <laughs> then, that's that's yeah. my gray wall, bitches. Yeah. And then now me and my community, like people that I talk to on there are, will be like, I kind of miss your gray wall. I'm like, <laughs> me too. So now I, I, got, a, I got a white wall. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not the same, but. <laughs> yeah, it was like this industrial looking wall. Yes. It was like yeah. super cool gray brick, you know, cement wall and I was like it worked like you knew like I said you knew it might have been boring in terms of like yeah I'm not at a gym or there's not cool lighting or anything but you knew you could come there and like there I am doing a workout in front of that gray wall yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and not everybody has the luxury of like a professional camera person following him around doing <laughs> no. videos all the time like for for a lot of us yes or mostly you know her it's like literally tripod holding a camera oh, yeah. and before you even invest in the tripod it's like balancing the phone oh, yeah. on your water bottle mm-hmm. and like it's an unflattering angle <laughs> i'm like you know somehow the videos always make me look like five seven when i'm like six four <laughs> and it's just like it's, it's just the angles you've got to play yeah. with the lighting oh, of to course. make me look better you know mm-hmm. so you know and for you it was, it was trial and error like, oh yeah you know so i think a lot of people feel scared about putting themselves out there mm-hmm. uh, and i've talked to some of the most elite coaches in the world that are like they they're they have a hard time wanting to put themselves out there in a uh-huh. digital community uh-huh. because it is scary like oh yeah um oh yeah the just the potential of getting lashed back or the work that goes into it mm-hmm. right because once you kind of start setting that precedent that's what people come to your page for mm-hmm. then it's even harder uh, absolutely and i think there's a probably a fine line between making sure you 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 know you come off confident and like i know what i'm doing but that you're not over the point of somebody having something to say to you you know i always made sure that i'm like I didn't get my feelings hurt if somebody had something to say, if it was legitimate, you know, constructive criticism or whatever they wanted to say. I'm like, okay, you know, like I don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to pretend like this is the only way and this is the right way or anything like that or that there's not a better way. Like I'm sure there is. And so I wanted to make sure, you know, that I don't, I am confident in my ability and I, I, you know what I mean, in, in my abilities personally. And I think people need to be confident in their abilities personally and then, learn to not take offense to somebody saying something and be like, you know, like either brush it off or, or start a conversation or whatever it might be. But it, because there's always going to be somebody that has some one liner like to say to you about, you know, your knee is going to pop out because of that. And I'm like, okay, man, like, you don't know my knee. Right. Right. <laughs> well, and like, you know, I heard uh, Lewis Howes say this about like his, his process of um, used to, like taking everything personally and mm-hmm. uh, you know it's really hard not to mm-hmm. uh, and it's you know at the end of the day just like oh thanks for your input kind of thing which is great like mm-hmm. we all want to be react reactive or mm-hmm. reactionary to something like that and I'm mm-hmm. really bad at it because I just want to be like all right sweetheart you want to play the game because we're going to play the game uh, and I try I'm getting better as I get older to uh-huh. not be a douche uh-huh. uh, about it uh, but sometimes it's really tough because oh, yeah. that one comment like maybe they're doing it just to get at you because they're competition oh yeah and they're trying oh, yeah. to like, take you away emotionally and see if that mm-hmm. can put you down a rabbit hole mm-hmm. uh, because yeah and I don't feel like there's I I do like I do, for the most part, if somebody throws out a creepy one-liner, which I don't, I rarely get when I do, (laughs) but I rarely get, you know, any creepy one-liners, honestly, because I don't, my videos don't, like, they're not going to do anything for you, man. If you want to find a sexy-ass video on Instagram, you have no problem. Like, you don't need to come to my page. So I don't get, I don't get, I don't get too many creepy one-liners, but I'll get an occasional, like, just jerk statement that like mm. you know they just wrote it to like to like you know poke the bear yeah. and i'm like you know and i've been pretty good at like you know not responding i either delete the content or i give them a smiley face and like a high five little emoji you know or something you know yeah. and i'm like that's okay but i will say that sometimes i think it's okay to respond when it's something that i feel very strongly about i have no problem responding you know i had somebody attack me about the fact that i eat meat and uh you know and i just and it was a very it was a very naive argument it was a very 
um, short-sighted argument, you know, that they made in terms of like, I shouldn't be allowed to use the hashtag healthy because I eat meat, mm. and I, you know, and I'm just like, you know, I can't, I cannot listen to that. I have no problem with anybody's diet or anybody choosing to be vegan, vegetarian, whatever it might be. But I think it's naive to assume that, um, you know, you know anything about anybody else's life circumstances, where they live, what they have access to, things like that. Like, it's just very, so I'm not going to ever, I never tell people that eating meat's the only way to go. I never tell them that paleo or any certain diet is like a good idea or anything like that. I want to make sure I stay very open and I just, and I'm okay with defending that when it, when it attacks me with absolutely no basis. Like right. if you tried to talk to me and be like, Oh, Hey, did you know, like maybe you could try that recipe with just cauliflower mixed in here or make this patty out of, you know, whatever the hell Brussels sprouts or something. And it would be a veg- vegetarian meal. And I'd be like, Oh, cool. Like that sounds good. I yeah. like that conversation, but don't come at me with some completely like, you know, jerk off baseless statement where I, like I am going to respond to those and I don't get mad, but I do just state my point and say, I don't believe you know, and having that closed off mind and I'm not going to assume to know everything about everybody. So please don't come to my page. Like just peace, man. Like yeah. go away. I don't really care. Like that's fine. <laughs> Do you, <laughs> you have know? to block a lot of people? No, Mm-mm. I don't actually. I don't think I've, I wonder if I've ever blocked. I blocked one chick who like was constantly making comments about my body in a weird, strange way that I was like, okay, this is weird that I blocked mm. it. It was like the funny thing is, of course, like the only sexual comment I got happened to be from a chick and that, you know, and I'm like, what? Like just gross, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> what? like, what are you doing girl? Like just, you know, that's the only thing I've had to block where I'm like, I don't want to see the same comment every time. Like yeah. just, <laughs> so. All right. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> Take, write that down, create dummy account and start making a new Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for you, you've been on this great journey. I love, uh, I love everywhere that the evolution of where my trainer Carmen has been going. Um, what's next? I, um, really want to focus on Houston now because I love Houston. I love where I live. Um, and I want to get out and do more classes, I think, or be involved in the community some way, either whether it's like teaming up with business, so it's a free boot camp or something like that. I would like, would like to do more of that because I really enjoy, um, I do enjoy the, the, the aspect of actually training like in person. Like I love my app and I love doing that and hearing and answering questions and helping, but it's, you know, of course it's different when you can be there in person with somebody who's trying something, you know, of yours and you can really coach them and watch them excel. Like it's super fun to do. So I want to get into small group classes and, and do more things like that because it's also not my strong suit. I wouldn't say like, I'm not very socially, I'm not, you know, very adventurous in that We're opposites in that realm. She might have the big following, <laughs> but in terms of social interaction, like opposite ends of who each other are, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, whereas I'm like, I can do that all day. Yeah. Right? 100 Stay person a room, room and a yeah. and dance. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I get, I get a little nervous. I, you know, it's, uh, but then once I'm there, I'm like, I, I really loved it. Like being in LA recently, I got to teach a class and I got to meet a lot of people from Instagram, from online community. And so it was, it was so cool. And like hearing them ask questions and like just talking to them, it was awesome. Like it was super cool experience. And it was, you know, and I get nervous about it. And then once it's happening, I'm like, oh, you know, it's so much fun. Like, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And I want to have that more. And I think in Houston, it's important because that's where I live. And that's, you know, that's my community and I like it. And I, it'd be fun to do that, you know, and have fitness spread everywhere. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. No, it's a, it's a cool journey to see you go in the other direction because a lot of people are going the other way, yeah. trying to get out of day-to-day training uh-huh. just to be able to, you know, go more online. online. Mm-hmm. And like for me, I don't train clients on a day-to-day basis. I get to train you when you come mm-hmm. to town or some, you know, a few people here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, it's enjoyable for me to actually get back out in the gym and train because mm-hmm. I don't get to do it on a regular mm-hmm. basis. And it is something that I love. I don't miss managing a schedule of a bunch of people. Yeah. Someone's like, oh, I can't make it or I'm missing or I'm like wondering where they're at. I'm like, oh, sh- okay, yeah, cool. I'll just sit here. Yeah. Um, you know, cause that's, it can wear on you as well. Oh, for sure. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I think that's awesome. And, and we've been talking a lot about how to set that up and, yeah. and ideas that you might, you know, use and, and, or ways mm-hmm. to formulate how you would actually do that. So mm-hmm. stay tuned for, for her announcement when she starts unleashing classes in the Houston area yes. uh, for everybody. And they're mm-hmm. going to be inside the loop. Is that the yes, correct Houston in, terminology? That's the term, okay. inside the loop. Yep. Inside the loop. <laughs> so we typically wrap up each podcast, and I'm going to do two different ones for you. But okay. we wrap up uh, a piece of advice for a brand new trainer getting into the industry. What's your piece of advice for 
uh, Grandma Betty who wants to quit her job at the at the bingo mm-hmm. studio and wants to be a trainer? Um, I think my piece of advice is to test it out. To test it out. I think that's that's one of the best things to do is because before I fully quit my art teaching job, I will say that I did um, test out having having that life and what would it be like I happen to ha- be on a break a long break from school because you know we get we get weeks at a time at Christmas and whatnot and so and I started training during one of those breaks just on the side and I tested it out in terms of like what would my day look like I was able to wake up and you know and pretend like I'm a full-time trainer and mm-hmm. pretend like this was my job and and lucky for me like I say it happened to work well with my school schedule because we get those breaks where we're off at a certain time um, but I think in any way that you can test it out, whether it's after your job or before your job or simply researching um, and looking into it. And I think not being, you know, not being scared, but also not being naive, like, you know, because it is a lot of work and it is going to be scary and clients don't just show up at your door, you know, and you need to need to think about those things. But, you know, if if they're not scaring you to the point of being paralyzed, then go ahead. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're going to be a little scared and that's totally OK, but you know, decide if it's what right for you. Decide if you're doing it for the right reasons. Like, do you super enjoy it or are you doing it because it's trending? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think a lot of times that's the only part that I get a little nervous about with people wanting to jump into fitness is like, they're like, it looks easy. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh man, that looks super easy and cool and like chill. So I want to do it. Like, I just, I'm going to study and like take this test. And it's like, that's not like, I feel like the test, like getting your, your certification from ACE or NASM or whatever is like the easiest part yeah. of anything because we can yes. all, we all know how to read and, you know, and study and, and apply ourselves in whatever way. It's the after that, that you're like, and they ain't going to help you either. Right. Like, don't, right. <laughs> you know, nobody's going to be like, congrats. And now here's what you do. It's mm-hmm. going to be like, congrats now peace like right. good luck <laughs> and that's really there isn't a whole lot of help out there in mm-hmm. general and that's why jessica and i really we got together to start fitness yes. break room is to mm-hmm. provide some sort of resource out there to help uh get you off the ground and f- not falsify expectations that mm-hmm. all these ebooks and online programs that i was sleeping on my sister's couch with two dollars in my bank account uh-huh. now i'm using this online sales formula making twenty five thousand dollars a minute uh-huh. or i've got nine thousand new leads coming in my gym a day and that's fucking bullshit <laughs> like like i'm pretty well networked in this industry and I don't know anybody really doing those kind of numbers. Like, Mm -hmm. and I use really shitty fake numbers there, but like even the numbers that they're claiming, Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're actually doing. And so even being able to get such great guests like Carmen and, and everyone else that you've heard, uh, to be able to showcase like, look, I have a really interesting journey Mm -hmm. coming into this. And it wasn't, and that's really given me this lens of perspective that's allowed me to be successful and allowed me to look at fitness with a different eye. Like Mm -hmm. we're not dogmatic in the sense that, um, there's only one way to enter fitness yeah. and there's only yeah. one way to do a squat and that there's only one way to do a lunge. Right. And then mm-hmm. there's more than one way to get into it. Like I didn't come in from an exercise science master's degree training at an uh-huh. elite facility slash a uh, collegiate team. Like mm-hmm. I fell into it from, you know, finishing school in 2008, like no job. So, um, I think that's really powerful. And, and I know you get hit up quite a bit by your audience, um, mm-hmm. to, you know, they potentially like they may have lost a big transformation with mm-hmm. you. And now they're like, oh, I think I could totally do that because as the people start to see success in their own journeys, now they're starting to lead and others are like, Oh, what are you doing? Like, how did mm-hmm. you get there? And mm-hmm. now it's their turn to pass the torch. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, and once again, like some people get afraid to want to pay accolades to like, don't be afraid to, you know, uh, to showcase the person that you got motivation from. Cause they'll always come back to the source. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then at the same time, like allow them to go be great and, and watch them grow as trainers. So mm-hmm. hopefully we can influence some of your audience yes. too, that you have this great story beyond like, I woke up like this <laughs> and, and have 600,000 uh-huh. followers yeah. and uh-huh. I get free shit from people. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like that. No, so, it was um, a lot of work mm-hmm. and it's every day still a lot yes. of work. Like, oh yeah. A lot of work. And I love it, but it is a lot of work. Yep. And she's only three hours away, but that we only get to hang out, you know, every couple months. She'll yeah. Come down mm-hmm. for a weekend for us to hang out in Austin and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So um, now my last one is, it's going to be social media driven, obviously, okay. because you got a lot of a, a lot of followers. <laughs> What's your piece of advice for someone trying to build their social media following? I my favorite thing um, is to pick something 
that you're very good at, like, you know, I think for me, it was the creativity and workouts and receptive to what people wanted. Like that was, that was my favorite part, designing workouts and coming up with that. But I think you can apply that to anything. If you're like nutrition based, yoga based, whatever it is, like, I feel like a lot of times we jump ahead into some, into sharing something that is not useful or digestible or ap- applicable for a, a large portion of the population. I think if you took it back and picked something a little more specific to share mm-hmm. that was like super could, you know, everybody, if they watched your one minute video would be able to accomplish something at the end of it, you know, is like, that's super helpful because I myself, even like, I'm not strong in yoga and I've been, you know, I'll go through and look for yoga videos and you can find a ton of like really super cool, like headstand spinny, super bendy stuff that I can't touch, <laughs> like, you know? And so I'm like, where's the one though? Like, can you give me like three moves you know, that lead into the next three moves that need into the next three moves, you know, of whatever, you know, and like pick like, here's, you know, a, a, like breaking, breaking it down into a system that like by the end of it, you, if you do all these videos and watch all these, by the end of it, you could do a headstand or whatever it might be. You know, I'm like something like very specific. That is what really excites me. That's why I love the ones that are, um, cooking based or like, um, art, even the art based ones where they're, they're just showing you how, you know, to DIY something or mm-hmm. something. I'm like those, I feel like that's why, I mean, hell, that's why Pinterest and DIY and all that is so popular is because yeah. you can, everybody, even if you're not handy manny or whatever it is, you can do this and get a product and be successful. Like uh, that's what I, uh, that's what I think is the best way to approach it is like pick what you know how to do really well. And everybody's really good at something, you know, and, and break it down and share it because people are uh, you know, we all like learning and trying new things. So it's going to be like, it's super cool to be able to watch something and be like, awesome. Like I can freaking do that. That's <laughs> I think that was such a great nugget of information that you just gave. Like, even though she's a very successful trainer and has her own app and that, Oh, I don't do that. Like I'm not a yogi. Like, and, yeah. and like, yeah. I can't just watch someone do this, like inversion, butterfly flip thingy and yeah. just magic do it from watching a video. No. So what are three things I can do to hopefully get there and, or teach me some fundamentals to get there. Mm-hmm. And I think t- a lot of times in fitness, we want to show like the cool and sexy and I can do, you know, a hundred thousand pound snatch. Uh, and then which would be super impressive if someone could do, <laughs> uh, but then it's like, right. But then, uh, but like I'll never get there. So it's just cool to see versus, getting engagement, right? And it's not just about followers, it's like likes and views and like how many comments and people are like actually wanting like, oh, that was great, I love this. And that's what really measures the success of social media as well is like what type of engagement of your audience because you Uh can have 600,000 people but if you got all dudes who just want to look at your butt. Yeah, then... Yeah. Not gonna, like products aren't like no one's going to come to you because like, oh, those products don't carry over. So Mm-mm. it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So you need to have an image. So back to the original thing you s- said about thong pics are great. Mm-hmm. You know, There's nothing. Like, yeah. I, pre- I mean, objectively, of course, I appreciate <laughs> the effort that goes into potentially taking a thong pic for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But from a, you know, fitness or like mm-hmm. a structural standpoint, social media wise, it doesn't necessarily get you to what you mm-hmm. hopefully want to do. Um, and I'm going to break all of your hearts, uh, just because people have a lot of social media followers or Instagram followers doesn't mean they're loaded. Mm -mm. Doesn't mean they get paid a ton of money. They could have 190 million followers and actually make no money. Yeah. Right. They Mm -hmm. could literally make no money. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's people out there who are still trying to figure out their way. So, you know, Carmen's done a really great job even by herself being able to get Mm -hmm. to that point. So jump on, uh, my trainer, Carmen on Instagram Mm -hmm. and my trainer, Carmen.com to be able to find you. Yes. And, uh, (laughs) we'll put a link up to the app. There's a free seven days. Yes. If any of you want to try that out and Mm -hmm. check it out. But, uh, I thank you very much for joining me here today and it was a ton of fun to have you. It was a blast. And we'll get her back on more for sure. Cause you guys like probably looking at her more than me. (laughs) So have a great day. Thanks again for listening to the Fitness Break Room podcast, everybody. You can follow us on Instagram at Fitness Break Room. And if you're looking to enter our monthly fitness swag giveaway, you can visit our website, fitnessbreakroom.com, and all that info is on the homepage. Hundreds of dollars worth of awesome stuff, so I wouldn't miss that. And then you can even subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and leave us a review if you're digging what we're bringing you. That would be awesome and very helpful. Okay, guys, have a beautiful week. Stay strong and always look out for the little guy. Let's go.